stay tuned. This video in the series about the William Goodrich Jones State Forest focuses on red cockaded woodpeckers. This bird is only one of two woodpecker species protected by the Endangered Species Act. The other bird is the ivory-billed woodpecker and it's presumed to be extinct. The Jones State Forest is home to several red cockaded family groups. Many actions are being taken to encourage their success. These woodpeckers live in mature pine trees, pine trees that have very little midstory. The lack of a midstory provides safety from predators. Historically, periodic fires cleared the underbrush and kept the pine forest healthy. Today, however, natural fires are suppressed because of the chance of wildfires and um, safety for nearby properties. And so natural fires are replaced with prescribed burns. Sometimes herbicides and mulching, as well as uh, other manual methods, are used to remove vegetation. To strengthen the current population of woodpeckers, with better genetic diversity, a couple of fledgling pairs from Louisiana were transferred to new artificial homes in the Jones State Forest. This is one of the management tools that we use to help our woodpecker populations. Because when they build their own cavity, it can take a year or more for them to build their own cavity, their own natural cavity. So there's a lot of time and energy spent in that. And without those cavities, then they have to roost in the trees and they're more, more vulnerable to predators and things like that. So in 30 minutes or so, one guy can get up there and put in one of these artificial cavities, boom, they're ready for the birds right away. The white marks on the trees in this picture simulate tree sap to help attract the birds to their new homes. The metal mesh over the holes is to keep other animals out until the birds move in. The birds were moved to their new homes at night and then released the next morning. Here are a few video clips. Stormy, forget it. Okay. Are we ready to load up? We're ready to load up. Careful walking through all the stobs and everything here. This one isn't as bad as what 11 will be, but. <laughs> <clears throat> or and another option I think there's two beds in my hotel room that's down the road so I'm all about options. the outdoors oh, okay good thank you though I wish I thought of it soon I would have planned to do that I have two sleeping bags oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's right I saw that here this is my home away from home my office away from office I love offices like these. <laughs> you don't even need them anymore. That's right. Yeah. Get out of the way. Uh, how, did, how did they look to you? Oh. Now what we're doing here, Mary, is last night, uh, the biologist crawled up there, climbed up there, and took the birds from the cage and put them into the cavity them reluctantly. <laughs> the bird was reluctant, but we got them into the cavity and we screened it over so the bird wouldn't uh, get upset and leave in the middle of the night and get eaten by a owl or something else happened to it. So we put the screen over it to let them settle down overnight. And so after hopefully a good night's rest, in a little while they'll start pecking on that screen. And that would be the time that their body clocks are saying, it's time to get up, it's time to go, it's time to forage. We'll explore, explore a new home. Okay, I think you'll be good there. And like I say, try not to look at it too. It's probably going to fall this way, but try not to look at it too much. Okay, you're there. Okay. Oh my gosh, Daddy. There we go. Oh, there it is, Daddy. Oh, wow. Did you see it, Daddy? Nope, I'm watching this one. There you go. Awesome. You got it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Woohoo! So 
took you long enough. Great day, huh, guys? Great yeah. day. Yeah. 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 Thank you all for sacrificing your morning and coming out this early to do this. And even before all this, we couldn't have done it without everybody who helped with the mid-story clearing, those who donated for these inserts, the artificial cavities, and those who came out last night to help stuff the birds into their new home. <laughs> so I appreciate that and helping me out, my klutzy self after a broken bone. So thank you all for helping me out so much. It all went great and it was worth all the the hard work and blood, sweat, and t probably some tears once in a while. <laughs> right. And long driving and long nights and early mornings. So thank y'all very much. It's just been great. Everybody's been super. And the, the staff here at the Jones State Forest, they helped out late last night, like early this morning. So it's great. They sacrificed a lot, too. I told them they're going to get triple overtime. <laughs> there you go. Didn't a lot of people prepare this also to get so this forest is really beautiful. Oh, oh yes. Well, we've been managing it for several years, but we just haven't had the means or the funds to do all the specific management that we need to. So the volunteers, we've had Boy Scouts in the past, the Master Naturalist stepped up and just outworked everybody out here clearing the brush in this uh, cluster area first, and then in cluster eight, the first one we were at. So he did all that. And then we can follow up later on with other treatments, herbiciding and or, or burning, prescribed burning and just keep this down to where it'll be good habitat for these birds. Hopefully they'll take and they'll stay here and our gene pool will be beefed up a little bit and our population will be beefed up. So all our birders who like to come see the RCWs, they'll have more to see. And that's thanks to, thanks to y'all. I love your enthusiasm and, and even our young student here, she's pretty <laughs> smart. So, so, so teacher, she was doing something legitimate and she learned a lot and she taught us some stuff too. So give her an A for today. <laughs> awesome, yeah. Well, it's been three weeks now since we stuffed the birds into the cavities and screened them over. And then the next morning, we released them by pulling off the screens and they flew out together, chatted at each other once a while, got together and flew off. So now we gave them a three week honeymoon. I left them alone for a while to let them settle into their new surroundings. And now what we're looking for today is activity on the trees. The birds are probably off on the forest foraging somewhere right now. We may or may not hear them, probably won't. But we're going to look on the trees that we put the birds into and see if there's activity. If they're picking those resin wells, making resin flow down, that means that they're using the trees and that they're still around here. Do this. <laughs> so what are you saying up there? I'm saying just a little bit of resin flow just to the left of this insert. Oh, the yeah. Cavity. Sometimes you'll see resin flow where they cut the hole in the tree, but that's, this is actually from resin well. To the left of the hole, yes. and a little bit down <laughs> below it. Right, and then the yes. other one is to the right of the hole, coming down. I and just mainly see streaks there. To the left of the hole, I see a few little drops. Yes. Yeah, you can see a couple of drops, like fairly fresh little drops that are yeah. frozen. Like I use the word frozen. Yeah. Translocated birds often go around visiting their neighbors, maybe hanging out with them for a while until they find their place. They could even pair up with some of the resident juveniles not necessarily with those we put them with. As it gets to nesting season in the spring, they will start to settle down somewhere on the forest, possibly where we originally put them, or possibly somewhere else. From photographs and spotting scopes from other birders and from our own birder here, Debbie, I have located three out of four of our translocated Louisiana birds. And Let's see here. I think the uh, female that we put in cluster 11, the one on the far south side, was photographed in cluster 12 north, which is still on the south side, but a different cluster, just on the, on the uh, north side of the stand that we put them in. The right leg was visible and I, could, I couldn't see all the, the colors clearly, but from what, just by looking at it and guessing at what I thought the colors looked like and then looking on here, I'm pretty sure it's that female that we put down there. Wonderful. So the conclusion is the translocation project is successful. Yes. I've been told by someone who does it more often that, hey, if you find 50% of the birds are doing good, we found 75%. <laughs> of course, that's how well. Well, then let's, let's give an applause. Yay. Let's give a hand. Yay. Yay.